The GovX Show is supported by Forrester, helping government organisations perform at their best. Visit forrester.com to learn more. Hey and welcome to another episode of the GovX Show. I'm Tim Coulthard, Community Director here at GovX Digital. And today's episode, we're going to be exploring customer experience, or CX as it's better known, and really how it's built into public services, whether they're digital or face-to-face. Are we doing a good job, or is there still a lot of work to do? So to help us unpack some of that, we've got two expert guests who have extensive experience in the public sector. We have Forrester's EMEA Director of Consulting, David Weeble, and we have our own GM for Government, David Wilde. So two David W's. We'll try not to confuse you too much during the show. We had a really interesting conversation around whether organisations are effectively identifying CX as part of their processes. Do they understand what it really means? Do they, does the organisation understand it? And have they truly mapped out customer experience as part of the way they deliver and execute services? A really interesting and vital topic as we look to deliver better outcomes for our citizens. So I think you're going to enjoy this one. Here they are. So welcome to another episode of the GovX show. Uh, interesting conversation to be had today around CX and customer experience. And we've got a couple of people very well placed to do so with, uh, with great experience working with different public sector organisations. So David Wild, our GM for government, who many of you know, uh, is joining us. And uh, this week's special guest is David Weeble from Forrester. David, welcome to the GovX show. Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Dave Weeble from Forrester and I head up Forrester's consulting group in Europe, particularly working with technology leaders and organisations on their technology strategy, innovation and also around customer and citizen experience. Great stuff. So as, as we've said, you're very well placed to have a conversation today around around CX. And I think, you know, let's do things properly. So let's start, I think, by maybe defining our terms when, when we're talking about customer experience. You know, it's a phrase that, that's it's well used, uh, but it may not be one that everybody universally agrees on what it means, what it means to them or what the most kind of important aspects of it might be. So I'd like you both relatively briefly to have a stab at sort of answering that really, which is what would you say is customer experience and why is it sort of so hot right now? And why is this a pertinent time to be talking about it? David Weeble, if you could, if you could kick us off with a crack at that. Yes, certainly. I mean, from Forrester's side, we started our research in customer experience quite a long time ago. And we were looking at it from um, how do you actually define what an experience is? So we actually talk about the three E's, ease, effectiveness and emotion. Uh, When we look at um, those elements of an experience, actually emotion is the strongest determinant of a good experience. Now, translating that into what does it mean from a if you look from a business perspective, good customer experience drives um, enrichment, it drives loyalty and it drives advocacy. But when we're looking from a perhaps a public sector or government point of view, we're not really thinking in the same terms, but it's still important. And that way we then look at it in terms of compliance. Are people complying with uh, the policies and, and approaches you want? Expansion. They interact with you even when they don't have to. And then advocacy. They actually tell others that they are having a, a good experience of dealing with you. Mm, interesting stuff. And it's as we know, it's not when you're interacting with sort of public services, it's not necessarily the fun things in life so therefore there's a different set of parameters and behaviors that you know it's 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 different to sort of being a brand you know a lover of a consumer brand where you're enjoying their the interaction this is this is a sort of completely different sort of mindset david what's what's your take on this i take exception public sector no i'm joking uh, right. <laughs> no seriously the um there are two things for me that really stand out around customer experience in in public sector getting things right first time, we have an ongoing relationship and the CX piece is about achieving that. There's no excuse for having to repeat or having to bounce people around and that really gets the heart of customer experience. The second one is what everyone refers to these days as once and done, which is where you have transactional services, reporting something, doing something, booking something, get it again on a once basis. And it shouldn't be having to deal with multiple agencies. It shouldn't be having to go through a painful experience on the web, nor should it be, I have to do one channel or the other. So 
So CX is about achieving those two destinations, right first time, for ongoing relationships, through that relationship, once and done for one-off transactions and sell nothing less. You're absolutely right about that necessarily a destination of choice for a lot of things, in fact, for most of what we do, but that doesn't mean it should be a poor experience. And so having those two at the heart of your thinking is, is quite key. The other thing that kind of comes through for me, though, is also, and it'll be interesting to expand this conversation, David, which is the, the single view of the customer or resident, yeah, or citizen, versus the 360 degree view. And I think this argument is still going through at the moment where for a number of years, um, we had everybody driving towards the one ring to rule them all model, the single view. Um, but what I'm seeing now, and I've been very skeptical about that for a long time because of the sheer complexity of, of public services. And actually there are points at which it's very inappropriate for having a single view, depending on the nature of what you're dealing with. Whereas a 360 degree view of the resident or the customer or the citizen from both the agency's point of view and that person's point of view, I think is much closer to the ethos of public service uh, and actually is something that residents you know, would, would be more comfortable with. Because the other thing that always leaps out in public sector is trust, transparency and accountability, which are things that in the private sector is more of a tradable commodity in public sector, it's absolute. Mm, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the idea of, of pursuing, identifying, measuring sort of better outcomes in terms of citizens' engagement with public services isn't new, obviously. I mean, it's, that's kind of the name of the game. But mm. CX as a term, as a concept, is sort of getting more and more traction. But, you know, so what's really different now from sort of other methodologies we've had around developing services, whether that's Agile or DevOps or any other sort of aspect, sort of behaviour? What what do we think is, is unique or new about CX now that it hasn't just always been around in another form where, through other delivery channels? David Weevil, would you like to maybe try and pick that one out? Yeah, I think this mirrors very much what's happening generally in, in organisations, both public and private sector. So one of the things that technology has done is it's sort of shifted this balance of power to the uh, consumer or to the citizen. So if you think about the old sort of structures, businesses, organizations define their processes and it was very much about how things worked. You know, I always use the example of uh, applying for a mortgage with a bank. You had to sort of you know, do all the steps that worked for the bank, not necessarily for you, including going in to see the bank manager at their yeah. convenience. When, you know, with it. when we look at now the application of technology, what that's done is it's moved that power to that consumer. So they decide when they want to interact with the bank, not the bank deciding. So the consumer and citizen is really now sort of orchestrating their um, way of interaction and organizations have to then um, work out how they're gonna interact on the customer or consumer uh, terms. So what this has the impact when we're talking about uh, design now is it's no longer about sort of just purely um, the technical capabilities. It's actually understanding that uh, customer journey, the uh, citizen journey, or even the employee journey through these different interactions to understand where the pain points are, to understand where the negative emotions are, where, where is anxiety, where is frustration, and then using that to guide the design. Other, other approaches like Agile, DevOps, they really follow on from that because one of the other things we have to do is experiment and test ideas. Uh, it's not going to be someone that can tell you exactly what you need to do. So you have to try things and be iterative and sort of saying, did this work or didn't it work? If it didn't work, we change it. And we don't have these massive uh, monolithic programs that we roll out and then find out we actually didn't really understand the problem in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. David, what's your take on it? Uh, I've got two takes on this. The first one is let, let's tackle this CX Agile and DevOps thing because because there's a lot of confusion around what all these things are. And I have a simple view, which, which I love throwing out simple views. It challenges people. Um, CX to me sets the, the foundations, customer experience or citizen experience, consumer experience is what's the expectation in simple terms. So use CX to map that. What you then need to do with all the stuff under the bonnet to make it happen is what Agile and DevOps is about. And they're different flavors, depending on the kind of technology you're bringing into the mix and the kind of companies you're dealing with. So it isn't one over the other. 
but it is one driving the other. I would always rather see CX setting the setting the road mm -hmm. on which Agile and DevOps will go down. Yeah. Um, and for me, by doing that, what you do is you give it a you give it a point of reference to keep it relevant, because one of the biggest issues with a lot of DevOps stuff, especially, is it can go wandering off in the wilderness because everyone's so excited with how cool this tech is and they completely lose sight of where they began. Yeah. Yeah. So that for me is is, is, is a key conceptual piece about being clear about how you're using those methodologies to achieve the outcome you want to achieve. There is a uniquely public sector angle to CX, though, that I'm finding really exciting, which is which you won't get in, in, in a particular in a commercial sector, which is unlocking and forcing multi agency working to happen, because what CX does is it knocks down the barriers. My favorite example of this is hospital discharges. Hospital discharges aren't about the hospital. They're about the person that's got better. And the funny thing about the person that's got better is it's not only they're not only leaving the hospital, they're going home. Mm -hmm. When they go home, they'll deal with the local authority. What they'll also deal with is primary health as well as acute health. CX, to make that a seamless experience, could involve all three of those organisations and the private sector potentially on providing some things in the home. That, for me, really articulates what CX can truly do to, to fundamentally reshape how we deal with better public service delivery. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you, you, you've touched upon the, the idea that there are obviously different agencies involved, different, different sort of outcomes that, that people are seeking. So who, who would typically own responsibility for CX in a local or central government organisation? You know, we don't tend to see CX job titles knocking around. Perhaps we should, but as of right now it doesn't seem to be the case so i guess yeah. people ask, who who does own it and who should own it and are they currently the same thing or what do we feel about that either david jump in <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll go first, david, your turn. You go. <laughs> david we will please have a crack um what do you this is a this is an interesting one, but again, particularly within public sector, we don't see anyone really owning, as, as David Upper said, that complete journey. Um, and that's part of the challenge. A lot of current CX activities have sort of been put under the hood of di basic digitalization. Mm. But, you know, it's not purely digitalization. Um, the experience actually spans all those physical contacts as well as the digital contacts. So the problem being is there's no one really taking that responsibility of what is the overall journey? What are the actual, you know, the friction points? Where are the handoff points where things are failing? Um, because they're really just encapsulating that experience within a very narrow sort of domain at the moment. And that's one of the things that, you know, we certainly want to see in organisations is that appreciation that they've got to take that uh, people-centric view and understand that journey of the person. And it's not purely around the, the technology team. So is it... Is it too is it too big an ask to have an, an individual with the responsibility no. for the whole piece, or, or do organisations have to adapt and, and make it so for it to for it to work? Um, I mean, unfortunately, it's symptomatic of, of one of the the ongoing challenges in public sector, which is um, the, the, there is still a, a, a reticence in taking ownership of of, of citizen accountability. Mm. Uh, and, and in part it's reflected by the sheer diversity of services that they've got but it's not in, that's not a good, not a valid excuse in my view by placing it under digital it's tail wagging dog and there's and, and we've seen the examples repeated examples of what happens as a result of that yeah um and 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 what we need to do is is learn our lessons from other sectors banking i think personally is one of the, the best examples out there now of where they learned this the hard way and by putting CX at the heart of the total experience, yeah, you, you actually had a fundamental rethink in how banking engaged with its customer. Public service needs to do that and it isn't doing it at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think it's sad that there aren't more CX type roles in customer service. The tendency still is customer service is very call center focused mm. or library focused. They're delivery arms. They're not customer. They're not customer experience, because we have three hundred or four hundred different services. They're still back to my earlier point: the three hundred and sixty degree view of the resident or citizen. 
um, it doesn't change the fact that they might deal with 20 or 30 of those services. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't do our best to make that a seamless um, and engaging experience through, which is where I think CX expertise could, could play a stronger role. I'd also like to see the dog wagging the tail more yeah. on the tail. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and is, it, is that also symptomatic of the idea that, that, that this CX piece tends to be seen as a sort of transformation project, a sort of one and done, let's get the technology in and then move on, as opposed to part of, you know, the fabric of business as usual. Is that something you see, David Weevil, in terms of people get excited about the, the delivery mechanisms and the tech and then the, the, the ongoing incorporation of it into the business or the organisation is, is, is lacking? Yeah. I mean, we see a number of different ways in which the maturity on CX goes through an organization from that very basic level, which is you know, very much focused on just fixing the, the small pain points. There's no actual CX vision of what does CX mean. So it's really very tactical, very, very um, you know, uh, basic in its approach. And also we find with technical people, you know, I mentioned the three E's earlier, that they tend to focus on ease and effectiveness and really avoid thinking about the emotional piece. <laughs> And yeah. that's obviously the bit that's the, the, you know, the challenge. So when we see organizations move through maturity, they, they generally start quite slowly with basic uh, journey mapping, understanding what's going on. But they said there's no vision. Then they think they're done. And even back to that transformational point, they think that they, you know, this is what it meant to do a CX transformation. Yeah. Then they realize that actually now they've got to design what the experience should be as opposed to just fixing things. And they almost then have to start again and really start developing that. Um, and that part of that transformation was also just getting um, awareness across an organization of what CX means. So actually that, that basic understanding of what drives a good experience so that the people delivering the experience understand what they're doing. Yeah, and I'm curious to sort of unpick how an organization goes about this, given, given what we've talked already about maybe a lack of understanding about what CX really is in terms of its ongoing part of the journey rather than it being a destination and then building a case and getting buy-in from <clears throat> the organization so that it doesn't just become this sort of you know ring fenced piece of digital activity it actually then becomes part of you know business as usual so where should organizations start uh, who should who should who should start and then how do they get buy-in from the rest of the organization David, well, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, and, I, and I think you, you've touched on a couple of really, really interesting points. So the first one is, um, you know, how, how do you put somebody over a thing that's spread across 20, 20 entities within an organisation? Not an easy start. So something I've been doing with, with some organisations, which seems to be fitting with them, is, is we don't use the term um, CX, but it's the same thing, which is reimagining your front doors. And your front doors are your points of presence, your contact, you know, and so on. And by thinking of it in those terms, what you do is you then steer people down that road of this is about the population you serve and the businesses you serve. Then you're starting from the right place. Yeah. The second point then is you touched on their business cases. We're really, really good at business cases on a department by department basis, uh, where budget, hold, budget holders will drive them. The very nature of CX is not that. CX by its nature, especially in public service, straddles those entities. So your business cases aren't as easy to, uh, to carve out. You know, who's gonna get the benefit? Now, my approach on that and, and conversations I have with a lot of folk is actually get real here. It's not your money. It's the taxpayer's money. The fact that we slice it up 30 different ways isn't important. And so by bringing it back to that reimagined level, you're able to then start thinking and you have to start thinking about cross organization. And I would say even further across multiple organization levels on business cases. There's been a long standing issue in public sector that that having business cases that transcend an organization's boundaries impossible it's not it's just about whether the will's there and there are loads of great examples of where it's been done successfully the reablement example i gave earlier is one uh, so it's achievable and actually how do you think we get most of the infrastructure built in this country you know it's, they are by their nature multi-agency large-scale complex business cases so we can do it yeah we just need to be willing to move forward on it yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and David, you're obviously Forrester, you're working in different public sector organisations and having these conversations. What seems to work in terms of getting things started in, in your experience? And, um, 
really, the, I mean, firstly, it's just that awareness of why this is important. So uh, again, it really circles back to that business case. There is a good business case for making this, uh, you know, this transformation. It, it makes sense. We see it from the, the private sector. You know, we know uh, from our data that organizations that have a good CX outperform organizations that have a bad CX. Very straightforward. Yeah. We've linked that to financial data so we know we can show that, that sort of correlation. But when you come to, to governments um, and uh, you know, sort of uh, private, uh, public sector, sorry, um, that, that compliance piece, um, if it just make it easier for people to uh, comply, um, it actually takes away a lot of the overhead, it takes away a lot of the, the tension, all the remedial work that goes on, um, because um, actually you've got a, a sort of a population that are doing what they should do, when they should do it, as opposed to having to you know, do all sort of the, the chasing up all the you know the, the admin work the support work around there so actually building a good cx is does make good investment sense as well it's not doing it just to make people feel better it's actually making them um you know uh, uh, comply and actually want to follow the rules that they're supposed to equally mirroring that onto the employee side if you look at want, wanting what most people want from a, an employee is an engaged productive employee if you work on the employee experience as well, then obviously that has has the benefits. Uh, one of the interesting data points we found is recently in the last decade, uh, investment in technology has not actually um, resulted in uh, an improvement in productivity anymore. So we're doing all these technology investments, but actually pro productivity isn't going up. So I feel that we need to refocus back in on actually what is it we're trying to help people do with technology as opposed to technology for the, the technology's sake. Yeah, and and you're both obviously, you know, in a position where you're exposed to different public sector organizations. Um, are, are, we, are we doing a good job of this in the sense of, are you hearing that this is a, this is a priority for a lot of organizations and they're, and they're making meaningful inroads or are, is it a bit patchy? Uh, I, I guess there'll be, you know, there'll be in, in any sort of transformation piece, there'll be early adopters and some shining examples, but it, as a sort of, as a mass, are public sector agencies making progress in the CX area? What do you think, David Weevil? I, I feel there's quite a bit of awareness of it. I wouldn't say there's been that much progress uh, okay. you know, to date. So uh, again, you hear lots of talk about it. And I see some good examples of ideas. I just don't see them coming yeah. um, you know, actually into execution. Uh, from a Forrester point of view, we work globally. So we actually work with governments around the world and we can see some differences. So um, we can see certainly from the US, a real focus on the sort of citizen experience now. That's a, it's a major push in lots and lots of uh, government departments over there. Um, I'd say less so in Europe at the moment. And we, we also see um, some, some cultural differences with across Europe in uh, understanding the importance of CX. But I'd say globally, overall, we have that sort of um, feeling that people are, are recognizing they have to do it. They're, they're struggling now for the reasons David said is um, but to, to actually understand where to start, how to make this happen and how to drive that, uh, that better experience. Yeah, yeah. David, similar, similar feedback from you in terms of what you're hearing? Yeah, very much so. I mean, one of the things that the public sector is really good at is pilots, pilot projects. Um, and we do suffer a bit from pilotitis on, on this particular area as, as we have done on some other areas. Um, I have a little bit more um, confidence that, that there will be a step forward, partly through a number of the very hard lessons that have been learned in COVID over the last 12 months, um, where CX has been forced on us uh, through necessity, especially around the kind of community resilience activity. And as a consequence of that, I've seen a, a, a significant shift uh, towards recognising that they need to do something around CX. Yeah, um, and 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 capture what they've used over the last twelve months to support vulnerable people and build on that. So I, I am I'm more optimistic now that I think we'll see some movement in the coming uh, couple of years. Um, I think also there is a, a hard numbers driver behind this, as David said earlier, quite rightly. You know, you do CX well, you save money. It's just really straightforward, <laughs> it, it, and it's doable, but, yeah. and it isn't that difficult. Um, and I think, you know, the the other consequence of COVID is going to be the rather large bill that the country has to pay. Um, and that is going to feed down into public sector finance. So I think the combination of the two might help accelerate. 
I absolutely agree with David around the global position out there. There are some great lessons we can learn from other countries. New Zealand's done some awesome stuff in this space and we could learn from it, yeah? And equally, uh, similarly, we can learn from elements of Europe what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what have you. So I think, you know, a little bit more, I think, of, of the UK um, looking around the world and learning from some of those lessons would be good. And I think that that's another thing I'm getting a sense of is, is people are more willing to, to listen and learn from others rather than do their own. Yeah. Um, yeah. But within the UK, perhaps we should share a bit more yeah. and a bit more humble and, and maybe copy a bit more yeah. rather than try and do it all ourselves. Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting you talk about sort of learning <laughs> from examples. Um, I mean, as more and more as more and more sort of examples of this are prevalent, you, as you say, you can learn from the, the challenges and the successes. So what I guess if, if we can sort of summarise this, what are the biggest sort of potential barriers or challenges that an organisation is going to come across and how can they sort of see those coming over the horizon and be set up to to avoid them or defeat them so, you know starting to perhaps to sketch out a kind of what are the key the key sort of pillars of successful cx um transformation projects and so on uh david weevil maybe you can have a crack at that one first it's probably a chunky one but i think essentially it's, it's starting to sketch out this sort of blueprint for success that i think organizations are going to need yeah, I mean, it, it, actually, it's it is fairly straightforward. I mean, you can put a, a, a fairly uh, simple process down. I mean, it does start with um, you know fix the obvious pain points first. Do the you know the low hanging fruit where where things don't work. Do it across the, the journey. So, do you understand the citizen journey? Um, use that as a reference, um, not technical requirements. But what is that journey? Where are the pain points? Where's the negative emotion? Then build out what do you want that that sort of experience to be use the tools we have available you know from ethnographic research um, customer data uh, etc do you understand what your 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 customer experience is have you measured it have you got the baseline and from there you can just go through a fairly normal set of steps it's not uh, it's not a mystery it's uh, it's actually fairly straightforward but the, the challenge is that it is bringing groups together that typically haven't worked together in the past and it's, it's using tools um, that go across a sort of a, a life cycle. So uh, you know, we had that conversation at Agile and uh, DevOps earlier. It isn't just Agile and DevOps. I said it is things like ethnographic research. It is things like understanding behaviors. It is things like uh, uh, you know, building out um, what the appropriate channels are, understanding the choice that the citizen has and not dictating them to go a path they don't want to go on. So yeah. things like that. Good stuff. And David, any any key foundations from you that you think organizations should have front of mind when they're when they're looking? Yeah, really, really strong one for me. Straight lines. Understand where the person is starting from, understand the destination and make the line straight and short. Customer experience is about getting to where they want to get to in the quickest, straightest way. And what the driver for me on CX is how you get rid of all of those wrinkles right turns and roundabouts along the way yeah and that's the biggest challenge for public sector the second point do not be limited by your organization's institutional behavior and that's a big one for public sector because it's organization versus place and people place and people should and must win organization should and must adapt to what they need good stuff as a as a rallying cry with which to um to sort of round things <laughs> off i think you know as as we have seen in recent years and uh, been accelerated in in the past year as well you know cx is the ball game in terms of sort of you know public services in so many ways uh in terms of perception of government trust and then how how they function and, and sort of deliver impact in people's lives as well so so many sort of critical outcomes that CX can contribute to uh, and be part of. So it's great. It's great to have a conversation with you both today about that because I think you know we're only going to see more of it. And for for organisations to a build their awareness, uh, to understand how to get started, to to understand what the challenges are they're going to see and how they can start to overcome them is really useful stuff. So some some great takeaways there for our audience. So I'd just like to thank you both for David W1, David W2 for, for joining <laughs> us. And um, thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Great. Cheers. Thank you very much. <laughs>